Woohoo! Hello, it's a me, Professor Palm, and welcome back, trainers, to the Meadow of March. I see you're trying to one up me on impressions there, Palm. Hello, Professor Sassafras. I apologize for the Mario act. It's just that with the Pokemon that we're covering today, I am so excited to cover them for the Meadow of March. And also, Mario kind of fits the bill for it. Given the impression, it sounds like a species of mushroom Pokemon. Well, ding, ding, ding. Correct, Professor Sassafras. It is mushroom Pokemon. But there's a lot of mushroom Pokemon in the world of Pokemon. Can you guess which one it is? I'll give you a hint. It's one that you really like. Oh, I know. It's the Shroomish and Berloom line, right? Yes! Two for two! Good on you, Professor Sassafras. It is Shroomish and Berloom, the two mushroom Pokemon that we're going to talk on. I gotta say, since I was doing a little bit of a Mario act, I wonder if I ate either Shroomish or Berloom, would I get an extra life? Would I get bigger and stronger? Hmm, maybe I should have some mushrooms on my pizza to find out. Mushroom on pizza is alright, but I won't take bite out of these guys. They're the poisonous type, especially if they release their spores. Poison? Oh jeez, I never realized how poisonous that these Pokemon could be. Thank you so much, Professor Sassafras. I think you've just saved my life. Whew, I thought that scent in the air was just something nice that they were giving. It's poison? <laughs> I better eat a peck berry. No problem, Professor. Can't have you dying on us just yet. We still have so many Pokemon to cover. Also, be sure to finish the entire Pika Berry just to be safe. Yum, that was a good Pekka Berry. Thank you so much, Professor Sassafras. You just saved my life. I would not be alive if it wasn't for you. I think that we should warn all our trainers out here how dangerous mushroom Pokemon can be. That would definitely be best, especially with how their appearances are a little deceiving. Trainers, heed mine as well as Professor Sassafras' advice. Do not use mushrooms. Let me tell you, as cool as Mario and Luigi make it look, around fungi or mushroom Pokemon like this, you're not going to get an extra life, you're not going to get bigger, and you're not going to get strong enough to take an extra hit. You are going down for a dirt nap. I gotta say, for little mushroom Pokemon, they're pretty powerful. I'll say, I have a Berloom on my team so I know just how powerful these Pokemon can be. But you always got to be cautious handling them. Again, after all, they're poisonous shrooms. Well, Professor, I think it's best that we teach our fellow trainers to stay far away from these Pokemon's poisonous toxins that could put them down for a dirt nap. But before we do that... Tecranova, I'd like to give you a very special thanks for my Grass Lizard Within shirt. Do you like the shirt that I have on, trainers? Are Trico, Grovile, and Sceptile some of your favorite grass-type starters? Or do you like another grass-type line, or even another line? Well, Tecranova has you covered. With the design she makes just like this, I think she is a phenomenal artist. Oh, and I'm going to put a link in the description to get to her Etsy page below. Please check her out, maybe buy a shirt, and please give her some good business. Why buy a silly stock image t-shirt when you can get a design just like this? I may not be sponsored by her, but I always want to say thank you so much, Tecranova, for giving me these great shirts. And if you buy one from her, always say, Professor Palm sent ya. All right, time to dive and learn all about these special mushrooms. Shroomish the Mushroom Pokemon is based on mushrooms, specifically the Puffball Mushroom and the Earth Star. For its habitat, Shroomish live in damp soil in the dark depths of forests and the woods. If you enter the forest and woods after a long rain, you'll see many shroomish feasting on the damp compost that is made up of the fallen, rotted leaves. Just like with normal mushrooms, shroomish are more active during the night, and in the day, shroomish prefer to be in the shade or in the darkness. This doesn't make them nocturnal, they just prefer to be in places where the sun doesn't shine. Shroomish are very alert Pokemon, and if it senses danger, it shakes its body and scatters spores from the top of its head all around just to protect itself. Don't be fooled by seeing this cute little dance. Shroomish's spores are nothing to be laughed at, and they are extremely dangerous. Shroomish also grows spores on its head, but be very careful around Shroomish, as the spores are so toxic 
They have the power to wilt the tallest of trees, the prettiest of flowers, and even weeds will fall down when they get a whiff of this horrible poison. In fact, the smell of a shroomish is so bad that even most poison Pokemon try to avoid it. Shroomish's toxic spores are so powerful, they can destroy an entire meadow, an entire mountain, and even a little field of flowers will not survive. And that's only one Shroomish. Imagine what an entire group opening up the poison spores can do. If you happen to own a Shroomish, or you see one in the wild, the best advice I could give you is make sure to wear a gas mask, or better yet, have something that combats poison. You see, Shroomish's spores are so toxic that if you inhale them, you'll be poisoned. Not just when you feel great pain all over your body, but you might have a horrible stomach ache. It's also possible you'll be throwing up for the rest of the day. Well, as hazardous to your health as Pokemon can be, sometimes they do a lot of cute things. Shroomish live in groups, and oftentimes they really like to play with each other. If you're lucky and you don't see them spreading any toxins, you'll see them all dancing together. It kind of looks like a really cute little ballet going on with these adorable mushroom Pokemon. Shroomish made its anime debut in the Pokemon Advanced Series episode, Taming of the Shroomish. In this episode, Ash and his friends saved a group of Shroomish from having the abandoned mansion they called home from being destroyed. It was all thanks to Alex, who was the mansion's owner's grandson. In the core series game, Shroomish has two abilities, being either Effect Spore or Poison Heal. A Shroomish with the ability Effect Spore could be very dangerous in battle, as contact with a physical move may result in the attacking Pokemon being put to sleep, paralyzed, or poisoned. It's never set, it's always one of the three. While a Shroomish with the ability Poison Heal can be very tough to take on, even though Poison is a weakness to Shroomish, if it's poisoned with the Poison Heal ability, instead, Shroomish will gain HP back instead of losing it. If you're somebody who likes to battle competitively using hidden abilities that were introduced in Generation 5, Shroomish's hidden ability is Quick Feet. So, having your Shroomish with a status condition is actually a blessing because this ability makes Shroomish's speed go up by 50%. In Generation 6, mainly the game's Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, there's a 50% chance if you catch a Shroomish, it's holding the item, the Tiny Mushroom. But, there's also a 5% chance that if you catch a Shroomish, it might be holding the item, the Big Mushroom. So, if you're a mushroom hunter out there, or you like selling those, go get yourself a Shroomish. You'll be making a lot of money with that Pokemon. Shroomish with all the spores really is a Doom Shroom, and it really can do a lot of damage for being a tiny plant. But now, I think it's time we see what a real power of a mushroom can be when it fights. So, let's evolve our little Shroomish into the Mushroom Warrior, Breloom. This Pokemon is a Mushroom Fighter. Professor Sassafras, why don't you tell us what makes Breloom such a powerful Shroom of Doom? Breloom, the Mushroom Pokemon, is based on Agric Mushrooms. However, Breloom's body and fighting style also draws inspiration from the Marsupial, the Kangaroo, but the ones that fight, which are known as Boxing Kangaroos. For its habitat, Breloom lives in warm and humid climates, places like tropical forests. Breloom feeds on trees and plants in the fields and forests. Oh, and it also really enjoys eating other fungi. If you look at Breloom, you'll see that it has very short stubby arms. Well, despite Breloom's appearance, its short arms are very stretchy, and when they stretch, they throw incredible punches. Breloom knocks out its foes really quick. Also, these punches are so fast that when Breloom fights, its punches are virtually invisible. Breloom's fighting technique is so strong that it puts pro boxers to shame. When looking at Breloom's tail, you notice that it has a couple of seeds. These seeds on Breloom's tail are made of hardened, toxic spores. Even if these seeds look tasty, never eat these seeds. Just taking a bite of this Pokemon seed will cause your stomach to rumble, causing you great pain and to throw up for the entire day. Beware the cap on Breloom's head. While it may look like a cool Jengasa, never touch this cap. The reason why is that Breloom scatters poisonous spores out of the holes on both sides. And let me tell you, these spores are so toxic that they can make even the biggest Pokemon collapse. Breloom's spores are so powerful that they even have the power to wilt flowers, weeds, and even trees with just a couple of spores. 
Also, these spores are that powerful that they can decimate an entire forest in only an hour. Berloom enjoy fighting. However, they only fight when they sense danger or are provoked. And they don't take well to humans being in their territory. However, they really enjoy eating. So if you wander into their territory and give them berries, you just earned yourself a new bodyguard as Berloom can be protective of its friends and its trainers. Berloom made its anime debut in the Pokemon Advance Challenge episode, A Shroomish Skirmish, where it attacked Ash and his friends because of Team Rocket stealing the Berloom's food. Thankfully, Mace Torchic evolved into Combuskin and took on the Berloom leader. It ended in a draw, but it was a very vicious battle. After that, the Berloom sided with Ash and his friends, and they all took on Team Rocket. Dawn's contest rival Kenny revealed that he owned a Berloom in the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Battle Dimension episode, Journey to the Unknown. His Berloom was a contest showstopper. In the Core Series games, as soon as Berloom evolves from Shroomish, it learns the move Mach Punch right off the bat, proving that it's become a fighter, and also that it gained the fighting type. Mod Punch is also Berloom's main move. Berloom has two abilities, and these are Effect Spore and Poison Heal. A Berloom with the ability Effect Spore can be very dangerous or very helpful, as making physical contact with the Pokemon may inflict poison, sleep, or paralysis on its attacker. And a Berloom with the ability Poison Heal can be tough to take on, as being poisoned will instead restore Berloom's HP instead of causing it to lose any. For those of you, like myself, who like to battle competitively, with the hidden abilities, Berloom, as of Generation 5, has the hidden ability Technician, which powers up weak moves, so Berloom can do more damage with them. A good strategy would be keeping these old moves, that don't do a lot, because with the power of Technician, they'll be powered to the max. While Shrooms seem like scary Pokemon to be around, they have a bunch of weaknesses. Since Shroomish is a pure grass type, it has a lot, and it's weak to Pokemon with the moves that are Fire type, Flying type, Poison type, Ice type, and Bug type. Wow, Shroomish has a lot of weaknesses. Since it gains a dual typing with fighting as it evolves, you should tell them what moves to avoid on Berloom, Professor Sassafras. Well, trainers, when using Berloom in battle, it's a strong fighter, but even the strong can fall, and Berloom is weak to Pokemon that are Poison type, Fire type, Psychic type, Ice type, and Fairy type, but these are only times two weaknesses for Berloom, and it has a major weakness to one type for being a grass fighting type. And that major times for weakness for Berloom is none other than flying type. Wow, that's a lot of weaknesses for Berloom. Maybe it can make it up in strengths. What do you think, Professor Palm? Grass type may have a lot of weaknesses, but they are tough when you need them to fight. And Shroomish being a pure grass type Pokemon learns moves that are strong against water type, ground type, and rock type. Yeah, not a lot, but it's still good to see them fight back. Well, Professor Sassafras, what does Berloom become strong against being a grass and fighting type Pokemon? Berloom is oftentimes an unstoppable fighter, and its grass fighting type moves give it an edge against water type, ground type, normal type, dark type, ice type, steel type, and rock type. Wow, with all the weaknesses it has, it has at least a lot of strengths, and it's like Berloom saying, you hit me, and I'll hit you back harder. As fun as Mario and Luigi made it look that mushrooms give you cool powers, Shroomish and Berloom are nothing like that. If anything, these mushrooms are poisonous and you'll need real power-ups to make you feel well again. I'll say, Shroomish and Berloom pack a serious punch both figuratively and literally. These shrooms don't give a shiitake who picks a fight with them. Sometimes seeing the spores that both Berloom and Shroomish release can be pretty, but remember, people always say you'll see crazy things with mushrooms. I think that's a pretty honest case with Shroomish. But with Berloom, on the other hand, you'll be seeing stars with the punches and the headbutts from this warrior mushroom. One thing for certain, be awesome to have these two fun guys on your team. Okay, okay, I'm done with the puns now. Anymore and I wouldn't have much room to talk about other things. Very funny, Professor. Well, with the power that Shroomish and Berloom have, I think it's safe to avoid mushrooms because of the spores. So maybe it's best we leave them so we stay healthy. And maybe it's best we don't eat any because these mushrooms will come after you and beat you. Whoa, I gotta say, I had no idea that little mushrooms could be tough. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, I know that a lot of mushrooms are poisonous and can be very strong, but I didn't think they were this strong! Yep, they're great Pokémon who are a little deceptive about how much strength they got. Thanks a lot for all your help, Professor Sassafras! Before we go, why don't we ask all these trainers out here a couple of questions? Oh yes, of course. I'd love to hear or see their answers. Well, trainers, when it comes to mushroom Pokémon, which one's your favorite, as well as favorite line? Which status effect do you think is the most handy on your opponent in battle? And do you think this line should have a poison type? Are you a treasure hunter in any of the core series games? Do you like getting tiny mushrooms, big mushrooms, or bomb mushrooms? Also, out of all three of them, which is your favorite mushroom? And, if these Pokémon had a regional variant, what should their typing be? Professor Sassafras, thank you for all your help for the Meadow of March. You've done so much. I gotta say, thanks for being here, and I know you gotta go, but I know that... I'll catch you later! You're welcome, Professor Palm. See you next time for covering another Pokémon, whenever that time comes around. And I hope you and all the trainers have an amazing day. Well, trainers, if you liked what you saw, please leave a like! If you have any other questions out there, you want to answer any of the ones Professor Sassafras and I threw out, you want me to cover another Pokémon line, or there's another Pokémon-related subject, please comment! And as always, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, smash the subscribe button! I hope that you enjoyed the second episode of the Meadow of March. We have a few more coming, and I hope that you stay tuned. I also hope that you like talking all about grass-type Pokémon. Thanks for watching, trainers! Palm out!